Welcome back, survivors. I'm the Survival Vis, and we are turning Carnivore's Legacy, where I'm thinking we have two weeks left of uh, covering Legacy as a series. We've basically gotten majority of the Endemic roster obtained now. There is uh, the Polacanthus and Gravitsop is the only one we're missing an into like both members of Diorama for, so we'll have to go back there. Great Lake, we've seen all the Endemics and everything that's going to be on there. I'm just going to take our usuals. I'm thinking we'll go to the Great Lake at least once more in order to try to see the western side of the map. I haven't really explored all that much, just to say we've seen the majority of it. Then we have a Rex Hunt to try doing one of the days. And then it's just maybe a little like pick and fill of some things, as well as going back to the Ancient Temple to try to find the uh, Mythic Velociraptor. See if we can get that for like the capstone for the trophy room. But I'm thinking all that will probably be maybe just a couple of weeks if so. After the Great Lake today, we might probably start the Endemic Fill and the Rex Hunt. I might actually do the Rex Hunt first because, I mean, it's going to be dangerous getting them. But if I only need two and I make them like my individual targets as soon as we get one just to pull out, it won't be that bad, I think, trying for them. But everything else is looking good. We'll see if we can get another Gorgonop, or Gorgosaurus, not a Gorgonops, no, a Gorgosaurus on the Great Lake, if possible, just to help fill that out, and then just really go from there. So yeah, everything looks good, we should be prepped, let's head into our new hunt for today. Okay, so we're loaded in here, I'm just going to grab the revolvers to start. Um, looks like we got something to the south, and then we have a pretty straight shot uh, westwards in order to see about the half of the map we haven't explored yet. Uh, all the red dots in the lake there are, I can't remember if it was or was not a sea scorpion, but it seems to be like a possible fictional name given to them. Laysnaps or something like that. Basically, you can't beat them onto land, so I can't really show them off any better than going for a swim. But if we go for a swim, they're likely going to kill us. Basically, think of it sort of like the stereotype of piranhas in a way, where you go into the water... They are probably going to be aggressive and try to just get to you and kill you off. So we won't really be able to do anything in regards to them. But all we really do have left is, again, just see if we can find a Gorgosaurus, because that will fill up that diorama. And then it's just... Actually, I'm trying to think of if there's anything else past that. Nope. Yeah, we got an Agathomas. We've actually got two of them, so I don't have to worry about that, so... Alright, gotta change that. Uh, point two four. Now, one of the ways that the Moz... Yeah, whether it is a typo for them being called Moz Hops or Moz Chops, I think it's like inconclusive right now for the comments, but... A way to possibly tell if you have a carnivorous one is spawned is to check the weight of it. Because apparently it's double the weight of your regular Moz Chop. Moz Chop. Moz Chops. It is... Their correct name is Moz Chops, but because of... I think one theory in the comments was because they ha there wasn't, like, really good translation services. That might have been a misspelling from trying to have uh, done the original Carnivore's title. Because apparently... If the comment is right, Moz... Er, if the comment is right, Carnivore's was developed in the Ukraine and released. And that is, they basically had to try to learn English and convert everything over translation-wise. Before the days of, like, you would just be able to look online and have translator stuff, you input one language and see what it pops out for you. Uh, okay, truth be told, water might be the fastest way. And there's nothing like, uh, soup. Oh! Well, we got a fish there, although... Yeah, I can't bring binoculars out, so I'm not really going to be able to examine anything as I'm swimming. I figure the water might just be the quickest route to go. We'll hop onto the shore once we get there. Um, it doesn't look like there's any of the Dinosuchus, so I think I should be safe there. But yeah, the only part on the Great Lake we have not seen is that little stretch on the west side there. Past uh, all this dry, I guess, flow bed. Well, it doesn't look like there's anything down there. And yeah, there was one comment that came into in apparently the camp that we do find here is actually supposed to be a poaching camp. I don't know if it's just like a little tease to like watch 
and see if I'll be affected by there possibly being poacher activity or not. My thing is, because of how much I've been on the map so far, that's not really a thing to worry about, but... Yeah, the camp we've seen that has... Uh-oh. Yeah, there's... Okay, it was right at the water surface there. Yeah, see, there they are. I don't know if I'd be able to actually... They are bound to the water, so I don't think I'll be able to do anything about, like, trying to get them. But yeah, you can see they are pretty ravenous, because I didn't think we actually had anything all that close to us. Yeah, no, because of... I can't get any closer to really get a good look at them without basically risking us getting killed, so... Those are the ravenous sea scorpion-like things that just inhabit the water. And that you need to be careful of, because they will happily rush you and try to get you down. So swimming on the Great Lake, not... It's permitted, but at your own risk. I'm just going to clear that out to get that reloaded. And yeah, everything is clear along this way, so I think I'm safe just to work our way westwards and start examining this other half of the map. I probably scared the... Um, I can't tell if the Gorgosaur... Or, I shouldn't say it is a Gorgosaurus, but I can't tell if the one endemic I was seeing ran down this way or it's all Parasaurolophus. I think it might all just be Parasaurs. You know what, I'll bring the revolver out just to have in case. And yeah, going from the map, I do think they are all just, uh, parasaurs. So we don't have to worry about them. And we can keep on our way, trying to find some other stuff. Yeah, they're just all parasaurs. Okay. I figured it was worth a stop just to do a double check, and now we can start exploring a little bit more and see what else is out here. I don't think I have to worry about them being provoked and attacking me. Oh, hang on. I thought I saw a Carnotaurus show up on, like... On, like, the binoculars for a second there. Alright, I also gotta change a keyboard, so every time I keep trying to uh, turn off the run, I keep pressing the wrong key. I'm used to the shift being much larger. Okay, maybe it was just... Let's talk a source. Maybe I've seen something else, because, like, if there was a Carnotaurus in the area, I'm pretty sure it would have been aggressive gone after me at, by now. So we'll go for a sprint again, keep working our way westwards, and try to see what else the map has on it, as well as just check that one endemic in case it can be a filler. But I feel like we've seen the majority of what the Great Lake does have on offer. Once we, uh... Once we do see this last little stretch, I might start going back and doing the endemic fill. Try... Probably start with Ah, uh, the Polacanthus, just because that is the species that we don't have any of. Once I've gotten at least one of those, then maybe I'll go for... Ah, uh, the Ornithomimus as well, and check and see if there are any other endemics I only have the one specimen of. Just so that way we try and fill out the full... Ah, uh, dioramas and that before we get the really challenging hunts in of the Mythic Velociraptor and the Rexes. Try to save the capstone challenges for the final two episodes next week. Okay, so we are up pretty high. That might give us some good visibility towards... Well, I thought maybe it would, but it seems like what we're actually trying to look for is a little more west-northwest. 
No, it's a brontosaurus. Oh, there you are, way up there. Okay, so... You're not really what we're after, so we can probably be safe to stay clear of that. I don't think there's anything all that around us to be nerve worried about. So yeah, we'll probably just run our way up north to see what the en other endemics are, and just see what this stretch of map has on it for offerings. It looks like this is a much more hilly area than the other spots. Like, I know the map isn't exactly what you would call even, but it seems like there's a lot more dips down and hills that go up for this little western half than we've seen in some of the other areas. Yeah, so we got some parasaurs around us. They're nothing too big to worry about. Yeah, it feels like this area... Oh! We got a crate up here, I think. Maybe that wasn't a poacher camp, and there's something over here to be found. Yeah, it was just something that looked like a... Yeah, here's a box. Oh, you can actually stand on it. Although, it does seem like it's just a random box in the middle of nowhere. Okay, well, there's not really anything of importance or value I see around it. Well, we'll leave the Stachosaurus alone, and keep working our way northwards. Yeah, I feel like if I had come down into this area to try hunting, this might be some of the more difficult terrain the map has on offer. Anything you're trying to get a lead on could easily suddenly take a jerk up or jerk down. And you have to be careful of that. Ooh. And some pretty tall grass, too. I think if you're going after anything like Velociraptor or even Allosaurus on this map, it could be a little difficult sighting them as they're rushing through terrain like this as well. But it does seem to be like pretty dense... Not really grasses, but more like ferns and shrubs. But I could see them blending in pretty well if you're not paying close attention. And then a little more north, and we have basically done our full loop around the Great Lake. No, oh, Parasaur's over there. Out of all the maps that I've been on, I would probably say this one, to me, seems like it will be the, again, most difficult to hunt on. It has a lot of variety to its terrain. There's some areas where it is more flat and rolling, like towards the southeastern corner. You have areas along the west here that are really hilly in that. You might be able to get uh, stay hidden rather well in the hills, but it does mean you need to be careful, too, of... Uh, how the animals could be hidden behind stuff just the same. Overall, though, I think it's been a great little time out here. And I'm trying to see. Okay, so what we're after should be... a bit northeast-ish. I'm just not seeing any, I mean, I'm seeing the... Uh, the dangerous endemic arthropod, I guess I'd call it. I'm not sure if it is actually a true spider or not. We haven't really had a... Uh... Well, maybe that's what I'll do. Ah, uh, yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll see about trying to just take care of that. I don't... It doesn't look like it's going to scare the endemic that is a little further over this way away. But I don't think I actually took one down and had a good look at it while we've been out on a hunt. Okay, so the wind is blowing hard to the east. Uh, I don't think the endemic should be scared of that, unless it might be an entr... Entrodomus? Entr Entrodomus? I can't remember what the... Its name is, but basically the Allosaur synonym. Or the... Uh, what would be... Starts with a D. The defunct synonym for Allosaurus. One, two, three, four... Yeah, no, it would be a spider. Actually, has some creepy details to it, too, that you can see the mouth part, the mandibles. 
And all the legs. Oh. Okay. So one of the endemics is just a Skullosaurus. Don't really need to worry about going for that. And I I don't think we're going to get lucky with finding a Gorgonops with this other endemic, but we can still at least take a little bit of a walk and see. Okay, there are parasaurs are over there, so it's actually supposed to be just beside the parasaurs. Oh, Majungatholus. I was just going to see if maybe I could bring it in, and... I don't think I have the time for another full hunt if I were to go back to the menu and hop in, so maybe we'll just see about trying to... Actually, you know what? I know what we can do. We're going to try for the Ornithomimus. Okay, we're loaded in. Yeah, my thinking is, if we don't have a lot of time, then why don't we try to focus our efforts... Oh, wait, there are... What would be the red dots in land? Oh, the fight of Saurus, that's right. Yeah, my thinking is, if we don't have a lot of time, we'll just do a quick little hop in, see if we can uh, come across what we're looking for with the uh, Ornithomimus on this map. Snag it, if possible, and then that helps clear off the trophy room, and we can spend next episode on Gravitsapa going for the Polacanthus. Because Gravitsapa was a fair-sized map. Once we can actually find the Polacanthus, I don't think they'll be too difficult to get, being an Ankyla Sword. They're not super fast-paced, but... Being, like, exclusive to the map makes me think they might be a little more rare to find. But we still do have a little bit of a ways to uh, run to encounter both of these. So maybe what I'll do is I'll work to the northwest one first, see if we can get sighting on that. I'm trying to remember what endemic animals we found on uh, the woods of Tranchox. I think they were the Trachodon and the Ornithomimus, and it might have only been those two, but I may be mistaken. I know we encountered Dryosaurus as well on the map, but they're not a trophy endemic. They're just an ambient endemic. Okay, this is where it's going to get a little tough. And then just a couple moss chops over there. Truth be told, I can't tell the weight of the other one there. I don't want to go too fast, just because the wind is kind of pushing our scent towards what that is. Ah, uh, they might both be point two. Oh no, one's point two three. Yeah, just leave them alone. Ah, oh, see. Okay, I'm trying to think. I might have to go more east and then try to cut back in directly west. The wind, I think, is giving our scent over to it, and that's why it is getting so much distance away from us. God, it really does feel like it's basically a dinosaur indicator. It's both the wind the wind direction and it points towards a dinosaur. It's very rarely it ever seems that the wind cooperates with you in carnivores. You almost have to plan out for the very first half of your hunts to be get into a position where the wind will not be a problem, and then start looking for what you want to hunt. Okay, but... We should be just towards the edge of being able to see what this uh, animal is. Or not, because the wind, once again, is wanting to be a complete pain in the rear end. Okay, well, I'm hoping, having gone a little bit more north, and now, there we go. I don't think the wind should be as problematic here. Another moss chops. Uh, the train might be obstructing our view to it. So I'm going to keep trying to work up northwards, because at least the wind doesn't seem to be cutting too close west.
But yeah, I can't think of many animals that were endemic on the woods of Tran Chalks. He did spend a little bit of time out here, but... There weren't all that many species to be found. Oh! Okay, apparently Strachosaurus can be on the map. So, good news is the wind is now going to not be a problem as I cut straight south. Ah, you're point one four. Okay, yeah, you're running away. You're only point one six. I don't know if that is a clue that uh, the carnivorous moss chops will always spawn in as a chunky boy or not. But it's, I guess it's one theory that you could try using for trying to narrow down if you're looking for one. I just would be, again, careful getting too close because they can be speedier than you expect. Especially with the little leap that they have, or the lunge they do for you. We'll take a look at what this endemic is, see what it is. If it is the Ornithomimus, we'll try our best to get it today. And if not, we'll just have to end the episode here. We've at least seen the full Great Lake map, we did a little 360 tour. So the main mission that we wanted to do for today has been accomplished. Now it's moving back into... Uh, endemic fill, and then it'll be the challenges ahead. And the Rex one, I don't know what map I'm going to hunt them on. There are a few good candidates. Like, there hasn't been a map that I'd say would be super, super difficult to hunt them on yet. Maybe Gravit Sapa might be, though. Not again, we'll just focus on... Uh, Polacanthus is our first target to go for. And then just try to think of what else we're missing. We've got the two Euplocephalus, we need the Ornithomimus. Uh, we need another Gorgosaurus. Okay. Says it should be just a little bit more to the south. Oh, perfect. There we go. So we will be going to the trophy room after all today. That actually clears us for woods of Tranchalks. And here we are in the trophy room. So again, we'll start right off the bat with the Ornithomimus just to show the two of them off because... I... No, they weren't the first endemic we ever got. I think it was actually the Trachodon was the first endemic we ever got, but... We can at least show off their completed diorama, and that means we have a lot of the trophy room completely filled up. And yeah, there's the two individuals. It kind of looks like odd. I mean, this one I think would be the larger of the two. 5.94 and 4.1. Yeah, so I got, again, I got what I think is like an adult and juvenile here, just with the size difference to them. They're a neat little inclusion to the mod. The detail, the textures are really good on them. They feel just like a carnivore's uh, themed animal for the game. Uh, we got the two Euplocephalus, so we don't need any there. Uh, I am a pair. The mythic Velociraptor actually is supposed to take the very middle pedestal, from what I've been told, so I didn't have to get rid of the one Velociraptor. I don't think I will aim for, like, enabling the Raptors to go for it, just because we've seen what the full diorama looks like. It's more so just to show off what they would be like and take in their poses. But, looks like just Gorgosaurus and Polacanthus, and that might actually be. and the Rexes, and that is all we need now. Yeah, that seems to be the case. So we may actually get Rex hunting in next episode as well, but we'll first focus on the Polacanthus and getting that diorama with something in there. But it has been quite an adventure so far. Again, I still am thinking it'll be one more episode this week and then two next week, but it's hard to say how it'll go. I know the radar hunting does take away some of the just general exploration that, but with how vast the maps are, I think it's good to have some sense of direction to cluing in to where the animals are, given what we're doing. If it's more like a full blind playthrough of the mod, and I was doing like the long runs I used to, I wouldn't, but I don't really think I got that in me anymore for Karn Wars, but we're at a good spot, we'll end the episode here with our newfound Phil diorama. So thank you all very much for joining me on this episode of the series. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a like. And if you have any comments, tips, or tricks, be sure to in the comments right down below. Until I see you all next video episode, Survivors, please remember, as always, 
to take care and stay alive. <laughs>